Dr. Bernard Kwabiado is a cancer biologist with a passion for educating people on how to change their lifestyles to avoid many cancer risks. He's written a book titled Cancer Causes and Controversies, which gives a revolutionary perspective on how to fight cancer. He joins us to share his findings. Please welcome Dr. Bernard. Doctor. Thank you very much, Moyua, for having me on the show. It's great to, to have you on, and it's, it's quite a timely one for, for someone like me, uh, because uh, uh, a young lady who I know who's rather like a cousin, who you also probably remember from mm -hmm. almost 20 years ago, uh, died at the age of 30 just a few days ago from cancer. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're finding again and again around the world, this seems to be coming up a lot. Now, is it that there's more cases of cancer or we're just better at diagnosing? It's really a bit of both. Uh, technology has advanced to the stage that we have ways of detecting the cancer very early. And with that has also come with the disadvantage of over-diagnosing the disease. Mm -hmm. But also our environment has changed a lot in terms of diet, uh, the sort of foods that we are eating right now, there's a lot of processed food, a lot of genetically modified foods. We don't fully understand the long-term implication of all the genetic modifications, but definitely these are also some of the issues that is really affecting our risk and increase our incidence of cancer that is being detected. Okay, so your book looks at, um, I mean, the subtitles, Understanding Risk Reduction and Prevention mm -hmm. uh, of Cancer. But cancer. let me ask, though, a, a cancer biologist, mm -hmm. what, what does a cancer biologist do? Okay, I'm a cancer biologist, and what I'm really interested in is really studying what are the etiological factors associated with prostate cancer. that's a big word. I'm going to explain that. <laughs> okay, so what the scientific community knows, and we've known this for about maybe a century almost, is that cancer really is a genetic disease. What do I mean by that? So anything that can potentially affect the DNA or your genes, okay? Mm -hmm. So DNA contains all the information that makes protein, enzymes, in essence, all the information that makes you as a person mm -hmm. is in your DNA. Right. So anything that can harm your DNA can potentially cause diseases. One such disease is cancer. Okay. okay. So there are things in the environment, for instance, smoke. Tobacco smoke contains about 16 carcinogenic compounds, okay? So these carcinogenic compounds, what they can do is damage your DNA. The cell has a way of repairing damaged DNA. Right. But over time, if the cell becomes uh, overwhelmed with a lot of unstable DNA or a lot of mutations, then that can take over. And this is some of the things that leads to cancer. Okay, okay. But in your book, I mean, the, the title is so, mm -hmm. so captivating, Causes and Controversies. Mm -hmm. What were some of the things you highlight? I mean, uh, when you mention cancer, for most people, it's synonymous to death sentence. Yeah. And you, you can't be too surprised because some of the, the, the numbers you quote in your book, I mean, there's, there's a part where you talk about a close to a quarter of a million people a year mm -hmm. are diagnosed with cancer. Most of them mm -hmm. die of cancer. The word cancer, like you said, really brings hopelessness. Mm -hmm. it's, it brings a dread. And like you said, it's like a death sentence to any person that is really diagnosed with a cancer. And really, well and truly, what the American Cancer Society is predicting is that one in two men in their lifetime will be diagnosed with cancer, and one in three women will be diagnosed with cancer. Right. And as we all know, is somehow each of us is really affected with can by cancer, either a close family member or some friends. Mm -hmm. So clearly the incidence is really high right now. But what we know is that less than 10% of all cancer is caused by obtaining or acquiring these bad genes from your family. Mm -hmm. So the rest, about 90%, is really how our genes is interacting with the environment. Right. Okay. So that tells us that, yes, cancer is increasing, but only up less than 10% is really as a result of inherited bad genes. So, so some, some of it is by what we do with ourselves, what, what we, we do, eat, exactly. what we... Okay. Exactly. So really, the 90% of cancer causes is something we can do something, something about. Something about. Which is really the goal of this book, is to really present uh, the scientific data to really show that if you smoke, your chances of getting lung cancer goes high. Right. Certain things that we get exposed to on the work environment, asbestos, radiation, increases your risk of leukemia or brain cancer. 
it's known that people, individuals who work in the tie and dye industry have increased risk of bla uh, bladder cancer because wow. of some of the compounds that they get exposed to. Wow. So these are some of the things that we can really do to reduce our risk. Of now, now Doc, uh, let me just ask, in your book, mm -hmm. Cancer Causes and Controversies, do you deal with practical things that Mary in South Africa or, or John in Germany can use to, one, lessen their risk of having cancer or uh, ideas of how they can deal with it in their day-to-day -day lives? In Cancer Causes and Controversies, it's actually devoted, uh, devoted a huge chunk of the book to behavior that we can really modify mm -hmm. to reduce our risk of getting the disease. One is our diet. It's very, very important that our diet, our diet is rich in uh, fruits and vegetables. Fruits and vegetables contain vitamins and phytochemicals. Mm -hmm. These are very important uh, new bionutrients that help to remove toxins from the body. Yeah. Another area that I talk about is really maintaining constant body weight. Right. So we need to be conscious of our caloric intake through the foods that we eat, and we really want to burn the same amount of calories. Right. That helps us to maintain constant body weight. Excess body fat is really associated with a lot of cancer. Okay. And how we maintain constant body weight is through exercise. 30 minutes of brisk walk, for instance. Another area that I talk about is our immune system. Mm -hmm. Why it's so important that our immune system is top notch, meaning we have a very healthy immune system. This, after all, is really our first defense against cancer risks. Mm -hmm. So the important thing is really to embrace all these healthy lifestyles. Okay. But after doing all that, it may also be very important, especially if there is some sort of genetic uh, predisposition in your family, to go for the recommended screening. Right. Because after right. all, when the disease is detected early, then you have a very good chance of getting treatment. Mm -hmm. I talk about all this in the book and also discuss really the controversies surrounding screening because a lot of it is not very specific or very sensitive. So I want people to read this book, get the information that they can really equip them to ask very important questions right. when they go and see their doctor. Doctor, thank you so much. Thank you very much for having me.